Good day, everyone. Um, what I want to introduce to you now is a tool that I've developed to help uh, process engineers and in industry to do a mass balance around um, a DMS cyclone. Um, I'll get into the details of it now, but this is the model, as you can see here. Um, where you can get it is basically, if you go to offer.ndme-inc.com, you put in your name and email address. The reason for your name and email address, I can just update, give you updates as, as, as new material becomes available uh, that you can go and collect it. So what you basically would get is you could download any of these things. Once you get, put the email in, I'll send you the link to get this. Uh, and you can download any of the, the stuff. There's a DSM handbook, the mass balance predictor uh, um, for, a, uh, for a, around a hydrocyclone, around a DMS, you've got a vibrating screen, Roslyn Rambler. Um, there's some um, guidelines that you can use to help you set up a mineral processing plant and the vibrating screen manufacturer's handbook, as well as the Dutch State Mines handbook on uh, dense medium uh, separation. Um, there's quite a heck of a lot in there that you can also get. So, And also, you also automatically get access to this area where I'll, I'll put my videos down for each of the uh, tools that I give as well as other talks in terms of um, uh, mineral processing in general. You also get access to the other areas, but I think you'd be probably most interested in this. Um, so uh, now back to the model. Um, okay, so here it is. So the way this model works is You've, you can see that here, it's just to do the mass balance around a DMS cycler. Now, uh, the reason I'm not going to give you exactly um, cyclone models of, the, of, of uh, things that you can use, because you can go to a cyclone supplier and they will specify the exact size cyclone that you need in terms of vortex find and spigot sizes, etc. Um, but to, just to help you to get an a intelligent mass balance around your um, DMS cyclone, if you have to specify it ever, and just so that you can also use it maybe as a diagnostic tool to see if your cyclone in the field is operating as uh, as the cyclone in theory can or should, and um, yeah, it's just to help you with having intelligent conversation with your vendor. Now, basically, the way this model is driven is just some typical inputs. These are just typical values for the different types of mining that you get. Coal mining, chrome, diamond, manganese, iron, or whatever. And you can see there it's in terms of the SGs of the feed floats and sinks. Um, the SG of the medium that you can see, the medium used, medium to solids ratio, medium density, uh, feed percentage to overflow, and operational head expressed as the diameters of uh, the cyclone. So let's say in here, I've just got an example here. I've got a 450 cyclone, and you can select um, any of these commodities here. And then basically, if I change it here, you can see it just changes these guideline values. Okay, now the reason I made them only guideline values is that um, in practice you might actually use slightly different values. For argument's sake, uh, I know in industry there's often a debate about how, uh, what the uh, head should be for certain things, and certain uh, companies have certain drivers in terms of what they decide the, the uh, D or the head uh, above the cyclone should be. Uh, of course, it is a debate because the higher the D, the higher the plant has to be developed or the bigger the pump uh, that uh, drives the cyclone. So it's, it's one of those things. But anyway, and then the other thing is that you can get here, you can see the medium to all ratio is also something that is something of, of concern in, in practice because the higher the medium to all ratio, the bigger the plant is for a certain tonnage uh, that is treated. However, on the downside is that if you have too low a medium to all ratio, you don't get the efficiency of cyclone separation that you are looking for. Now in diamonds is a specific case, you can see that most of the material goes to overflow because you think of a diamonds in terms of percentage of the uh, feed to a plant is a very, very small fraction. I mean, given the idea, 100 kiloton, uh, sorry, 100 carats per, uh, 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 per 100 tons, which is a fairly rich ore, is actually 0.2 grams per ton. So it's a freaking, you can imagine how small a percentage is actually diamond that would go to the um, underflow. So um, having s said that, uh, you could also then just change the, um, if you were to take another commodity, like let's say uh, iron ore, 
you can see the percentage is, is recommended is 30 percent but i'll stick to diamonds for now just for the explanation yeah then you've put the feet uh top size in now the thing is we've almost always got this old rule about um three times the uh diameter you know particles three times the diameter of it is the diameter of the piping that it can be in is a general rule so as you can see um, this will dictate the minimum cyclone size that you would need in terms of the top size fitted and that's often let's say if we change it to 25 you can see there the re recommended minimum cyclone size changes now you can just play with the number here and i know that cyclone supplies have very discrete uh, numbers it's like a 800 millimeter cyclone or 900 millimeter cyclone internal diameter um, and you can change it to the various numbers that, that you th think or close to them uh, that's the way why i wrote it the way i did um, then um, having said that the ratios of the cyclone vortex finder spigots etc i've chosen conservative values to drive the mass balance the reason being is that I don't want you to spe be uh, overly hopeful in when you're designing when i say hopeful or optimistic is probably rather the word and put in designs that when in practice then you go to the cyclone supplier and suddenly you've got um values that uh, aren't achievable or you don't achieve them in practice so i'd rather put conservative uh, mass balance numbers here and then uh, you would have pleasant surprises and not unpleasant surprises once you go to your cyclone supply i.e meaning that your medium to all ratio is easier achievable or you've got more than you can use a smaller cyclone uh, than what you thought or rather and and there's there's volume that needs to be pumped so that's the reason why i've uh, chosen conservative values so as you can see here here comes the mass balance out but you can change you can see that you could change the values um Let's say you wanted to see uh, what the number of cyclones does per, um, uh, for that tonnage. And suddenly you can see that what has happened is if you change the number of cyclones, the medium to all ratio in the feed has dropped. And you can see it's below what is recommended. Now, typically, I would, uh, you would probably want to be uh, conservative on that. You can either go for a larger, uh, uh, more cyclones or... Uh, you could even go, let's say you go 800, 800 cyclone and let's see if two works for you. It's still too low. Let's see if we go for 900 cyclone. Remembering that a 900 cyclone, yeah, is, uh, but you've still got to try and get uh, a value of 12 Ds. Now remember 12 Ds means the, times the diameter of the cyclone. So suddenly your head increases. So these are the permutations that you can play with. So I hope this um, helps you in your uh, endeavors to diagnose your uh, cyclone operation and also you know give you a good first heads up in terms of when you're designing a, a cyclone for a new circuit uh, or new um, venture that you might have and um, as i said these are guidelines strongly recommend you speak to a cyclone supplier um, and go through it and i've put the vibrating sorry the dutch state mines manual that you can go through at your own leisure to see if it matches the theory of cycloning with this this tool that we've got here for you thank you